Hi, it's Daniel here for Design Break, and today I thought I would talk about moving from WordPress with a page builder setup to Webflow if you have no development experience. So there's definitely a lot of things that are different between WordPress and a page builder like Elementor and Webflow. Um, and I'm not going to talk about all the differences between them. I've done a couple of videos in the past about that. Um, but today I thought we'd talk specifically about um, what the experience is like if you're moving from WordPress onto a Webflow setup. So I thought we'd jump right in and start with CSS naming conventions. So when you're creating elements in Webflow, you'll notice that instead of like in WordPress where you would just drag and drop some columns in or drag and drop an image element or an accordion element, um, you're working mostly with div blocks, um, uh, which are the, the sort of native building block of, of web design. And then whenever you apply styles to that uh, block, you are automatically assigned a class name and it will give you the class name um, up in the top right hand corner of the UI. And that is automatically generated unless you add one. So the, the first tip I would give you is to first add a, uh, a class so you don't forget. So whenever you create a div block, the first thing to do is give it a class. Um, and then the second thing is tied in with the first, which is in the naming of the class. So if you name it um, div block one, that's obviously not going to be terribly helpful when you come back to style that later. So if you're creating a hero section, for example, you would maybe want to call it hero section. Now, Webflow will allow you to call it hero section with a space, like a normal space in between, and it'll allow you to capitalize both hero and section, and it looks really nice. Um, however, I would say if you are planning to use any other integrations or if you might be sending this off to a developer or um, to, you know, to do additional work, you might want to stick to uh, a, a, like an actual CSS naming convention. So that the first thing to do would be to strip out those uh, uppercase and spaces and use lo all lowercase and add a dash in between. So it would be hero section with a dash in between. Um, and the, the reason for that is that's actually what Webflow will output to your CSS when you export your code, if you ever do export your code. If you're building totally on Webflow and you have no plans to integrate with this, the site with anything else and you're not going to hand it off to a developer, you can completely ignore this um, because then you can, you can make the classes whatever you want to do. And I have done that in a few projects where I just named them uh, whatever makes most sense and let Webflow handle the compression of the, the titles down to lowercase and so on. And then, so the, the third part of that is actually using a naming convention. Now, I won't go into the details, but I'll drop some links in the description so you can check those out. Um, there's a few different ones that are, are quite popular. So the second thing is also related to CSS, and that's about the first word in the acronym of what CSS stands for, which is cascading. So obviously cascading style sheets is what CSS stands for. Um, and that is that the style changes trickle down uh, to, to the children of what you are styling. So if you create a div block and then you put a paragraph inside it, if you style the div block and make the text color white, if you use that property on the containing div block, then the paragraph text inside will also become white. And let's say you have a bunch of heading styles and you haven't specifically applied a color to these headings, you've just added a size to the h1, h2, h3, when you then create a div block and you put those headings in, if the div block has a color applied, then the children, the headings that you've applied, that you've inserted, they'll also inherit that color as well. So it makes it really great for things like if you have a website that's mostly a white background with black text, and then you want to have a, a sort of dark section that has a black background. If you've not um, specified a color in your headings and your paragraph type, then you can just click on the section that you want to be dark, give it a class of dark section um, and then apply a color on a text color of white and then all the text will be white whether it's a heading a paragraph uh, block or whatever um, all the text will be white so you get this really um, nice easy to manage system where you can easily make changes so this obviously applies to different properties as well, which are inherited by the children. And then if you want to specifically change one, so in the dark section example, if we wanted to make one of the headings a sort of um, bright blue color, we could click on that heading and give it a specific class um, and call that one blue heading or something. Um, and that would override the parents um, properties because it's housed, it's because it's more specific because you've um, given it its own class and it's not having to inherit it from something else. So. 
Um, that's kind of the basics there. I, again, this is a really, really light overview. So I'll maybe uh, see if I can find a video and put a link in the description to a, a video that explains that. But that's just something that you probably won't be familiar with if you don't have development knowledge and you're using WordPress and a page builder like Elementor um, because they, they don't really introduce you to CSS at all. In fact, there's, there's kind of like a buffer between you and the actual code that's being generated. Um, which is one of the reasons why Webflow is so great because you're actually manipulating the CSS just in a visual way. So, um, but I won't talk about how great Webflow is in this because it's uh, that's already been covered in many previous videos. <laughs> so the last thing I was gonna talk about is the friend and foe of the universal classes system. So this is not gonna be a problem for you at all if you have development knowledge because you'll know that this is how CSS works. This is only really an issue if you've used something like Elementor to build your websites almost exclusively. Um, and that is when you create a section, um, and I'll use our previous example of the dark section. If I create a dark section on a website and then I want to create that same section on another page, I can just create a section, give it the same class of dark section, and then that will also that inherit all the styles that I applied on the previous page. So now I've got two pages that use the same styling rules. It's great. Um, then the problem is the client says that on one of the pages, they actually want that dark, dark section to be like a dark red. Um, so I go into the page, I change the color to dark red, but now the, the section on the other page, the first page that originally had the dark section, it's also now red because they're both using the same set of styling rules. Um, and again, if you have development knowledge, you'll know that's how CSS works. But if you've been used to Elementor, you might be sort of confused at why that's happening. So what you need to do is make a more specific uh, class. So on your second page, you would start by calling it dark section. Um, the one that you want to be dark red. And then what you would add is a second class and you can add another combo class in there um, and call that burgundy or dark red section and then change the background color. And what that does is it makes any changes that you make to this, to that new combo class apply only to that, that element or to any element that has the same combo class. Um, so let's say in this example that you then want to change something general again. So let's say that the section doesn't have enough padding around the edges, um, but you don't want to just change the padding on the dark red section. You want to change it on the black section as well. So you would go back to your black section and make the change there, or, or you can actually use the UI and Webflow to target just the original class, make the changes there, and that way they'll apply to all of them. And that's again related to how specific you are with your CSS rules. So you'll see that most of the main differences here are just around how the styling is applied. Uh, building the actual blocks, taking your text blocks, your images is, is done in a similar enough way that you're probably gonna be very comfortable with that. Um, it's just how you manage the styles on a website. Uh, I have seen examples of Webflow websites um, posted where people haven't named cl classes, like haven't given the classes proper names, um, and it just just be a nightmare. I have to have everything named correctly. Um, but, you know, I guess some people manage. So, uh, yeah, it's, I think that's what the risk is with moving from Elementor to Webflow is not paying attention to the class system and just letting Webflow generate these classes for you and then you end up with kind of a mess and not knowing what it is. Even now, sometimes I'll create something and you don't, if you don't need to apply any styles to it, you don't need to give it a class, but then I'll leave it there and then I'll come back to it later when I'm tidying up the website to make it mobile responsive, for example, and then I'll need to apply a class to it. And uh, if you don't apply it and yourself and give it a name, it'll automatically assign you one, which you can easily change, but it just makes it, a, there's the potential for it to be missed. And then you have one called div block 235. So yeah, that's just been it. A really quick overview of um, some of the differences between Webflow and WordPress and Elementor. So there's definitely more to be said about the differences between the two of them, but these are just kind of the main things. If you have no development knowledge, what you can expect to, um, to run into when you move. So um, I hope that's helpful. And uh, if you liked the video, please hit like and uh, subscribe to our channel if you like to get updates when we post new videos. And we'll see you in the next one. Smash that like button.